Yo, what's going on guys? This is me, Asin, and welcome to my Elich combo testing video. So, <laughs> nothing has changed since my deck profile, so all I have to ask you is uh, please like, comment, and subscribe so I keep making videos like these. And, uh, yeah, by the way, the reason why I'm not making, like, replay videos against the meta on Edeo Pro Ignis is that it literally takes, like, 25 billion years to, like, find opponents. Because, seriously, it's really that annoying. It, it legit takes 10 years. And also, if I make, like, a 10-minute video, it's not 10 minutes of my time. It's, like five to ten hours realistically it's that long because i also have to choose the, the like the correct clips which truly showcases this deck because i can't just show you a deck where all i do is just uh, attack with l lich like three times or hand trap my opponent 20 times and then nothing happens or my opponent just sucked like i can't just show anything because people will get pissed and like nobody really wants the same thing honestly i'm just i'm just gonna do the video that i find is more appropriate and for like for me i think the most optimal thing i can do is just showcase this deck's consistency and ceiling and if you have a problem with that well i'm sorry i can't really do anything for you I, i'm just gonna be straight up honest but anyway anyways um i'm just gonna go straight up into test hand number one Takes 11 billion years! <laughs> Alright, uh, this hand sucks, cool. So, we can't really do much, obviously, since this hand is not good. Because this takes up our normal summon, and if we want to draw cards, well, even if we draw like Uni Zombie or Plague Spreader, actually, if we draw Plague Spreader, we can play because this pitches it. So, yeah, let's just uh, hope we draw Plague Spreader. So, this card, mm, yeah, these two, uh, whatever. Uh, Alright, that's not good. <laughs> So I'll use that and then search. I mean, interruptions wise, it's decent because it's like three interruptions. Because we have Conquistador, Infinite, and then you have like like two pretty good cards. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's pretty good. Like we have so many resources that we we can't really get OTK'd. So I'm just gonna use both effects. Uh, so set one and then set the other. I'm just going to explain everything once we get it during the opponent's uh, turn. So there are a few a few things that you have to consider when you play this deck. In this very specific situation, there is one thing that will always scare everyone, and that's Lightning Storm. Because if someone goes into battle phase and you have the counter trap, at least during the, the like start step of battle phase, you can actually still use Scarlet to summon Eldritch, and then at this point, like you're kind of safe. However, if you uh, if you get Lightning Storm, you can't really do anything unless you use this preemptively and then use the counter trap to negate Lightning Storm. But in this situation, we don't have Lightning Storm anyways, so we're kind of like in a spot where we lose regardless. But we actually have a lot of uh, stability. So what I would do, I would still go for the, um, the trap first, even though it changes not much. Because the thing is, let's just say this gets Kaiju'd, you still have the White Fate to like protect it. So at least you can't just... You, you, because the thing is, if you go Conquistador, Chain Link 1, and then Chain Link 2, the, the trap, and you get Ashed, you're screwed because you wasted this for no reason, like for free. But now, at least if you get ashed on this, it's not, you know, it's not, uh, it's not gonna be that bad because at least you still have the Conquistador, and next turn you can probably play. The ash obviously wouldn't ha would have been used on the Magician's Souls to draw two cards, but they can still draw ash for turn. The probability is relatively high, so you may want to make sure you, you play around everything, but... This is definitely a very deadly follow-up, and the reason why we don't turn Magician Souls into a useless Link 1 is because that Link 1 applies zero pressure, but Magician Souls itself just staying on the field applies a ridiculous amount of pressure, because now they have to jump over this Magician Souls, otherwise they are, you know, uh, they're not doing well, so definitely what you have to do, and uh, we have Infinite and Ash and Conquistador in case this didn't get uh, interrupted, so definitely what I can consider uh, a res really respectable hand, even though we still drew like Apprentice, which is incredibly annoying, but let's just not complain and move on to hand number two. Uh, yeah, this is amazing, actually. I really like this. So this is going to be full combo, and we don't need this, so we're just gonna put it on the top of the deck or bottom, sorry. St the top of the deck yeah okay it's so cool so we're putting this back to the top this by the way is going to interrupt our opponent technically so that's nice so needle fiber summon desk bot all right and now we're going to go for a path that allows us to draw slightly more so link cross first instead of going aura dawn because we have so much extra deck space that we can kind of afford it if you don't want to waste the extra deck space it's just totally fine but you know why not 
It's just a free draw. Like, and a free draw is Pot of Greed because it's a plus one. And Pot of Greed, yeah, sure, it, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, sure, Pot of Greed draws two, but it's only a plus one. Now we're using zero cards to draw one, so it is Pot of Greed. So, revive back, formula, I mean, it doesn't matter at all. Needle Fiber number two. And now we're gonna make a boy, our boy Oradon. Great. Summon three tokens. Awesome. And then we're gonna get Dust Bot 1. Tribute Oradon with one token. Which is going to summon Olion. Then we're gonna make Garden Rose Maiden. So we're going to get Olion's effect. Uh, this is where we make Coral Dragon, and then we make Ravenous Crocozor, so we're gonna draw one, and two. Now we can actually banish, uh, that's whatever, we can actually banish this and revive back the Coral Dragon, and then make this guy so wow that's actually so much damage too oh my god that's actually crazy oh man but yeah this is just sick like you have all of that already like just look at the amount of resources that you have at your disposal it's just insane you don't even need to um like search anything with the crystal outline in theory but we're still gonna do it because why not so gonna pay 800 feels great and search Golden Land forever, why not? I mean, we're such in a good position that it really doesn't matter. We oh, <laughs> This is so cute. We have so many cards that we can only set four and not five. So, whatever, I'll just set this, this... Uh, Hakuero is the card that we're gonna keep in the hand, because this is also an interruption, because we're going to detach this for turn, so we can pop a monster. So, why not do that? Because the Hakuero doesn't really scare me right now, although... Yeah, no, yeah, that's definitely correct. So we're gonna set all these cards. And then during our opponent's turn, uh, we can do that, detach definitely this, because it's the one card that does have value, don't forget about that. We can call fire, or fire, whatever. And then this for, ooh, whoops, that's supposed to be in a separate chain link. Not uh, supposed to chain to this. And then, you know, you, we, we can revive back the Yuki something, pop a card. Is it Yuki? Yeah, Yoko, oh my god. <laughs> and then, you know, we're also going to be able to like pop another face-up card. It doesn't have to be a monster, by the way, it's just a face-up card. So we can do that, and then we have, uh, we, we can even tribute that uh, useless uh, monster for Golden Land Forever, which is uh, a Speller Trap or Monster Effect Negation. It's basically a Salaman Great War. So that's actually really sick. Just look at the amount of interruptions, the amount of resources, and the floatability in the grave. Like, already two really good cards in the grave. And just, and also your Clifford Scout on the field. This is just crazy, man. This deck is a huge problem. But anyways, let's move on to hand number three. This hand is also very good. It depends on what we draw, but this hand is good so far. If we draw Ash, this is like sick. All right, so we're going to discard these two. Why not? Uh, yeah, I value, yeah, I definitely value Conquistador more. Even though it doesn't change much. Okay, so this is not combo, but it's like... Once again, like, resource-wise, this is crazy, so we're gonna go for Black Awakening, summon this. Never summon your freaking Eldritch in column number 2 or 4. I keep seeing people who do that, like, are you really trying to lose to Anima? You're nuts, and even if it's not Anima, it can be Induk in, like, the mirror or something, like, something like that, so... No, man, don't, don't uh, mess up this bad. So, we have one card that we can use right away, and we have this, so we can set two cards already, so it means that we only have space to set three cards. However, we're going to end with four cards, so there is one card that we shouldn't be setting. So, one thing that we can get, we can get all the cursed, like, cards, so we can have this to set, like, the counter trap, and then this to set the, the search the Hakuero, and set Conquistador, but then we can't really set the infinite. So, it's the only problem, but at least if our board gets completely wiped, we have a hand trap, but not really. <laughs> not really, but kind of. So, yeah, the sequencing doesn't really matter, like, which one do you set and which one do you search. It's just that now they have more information. So, actually, it kind of does matter a little bit, but whatever. And don't even try play playing around Mech Knights, like, it's actually impossible. <laughs> like, I mean, you're gonna have, like, 65 billion cards every single time, so... 
Yeah. And then we're going to... Well, I mean, in theory, you can also, like, just rely on the Elige that you have on the field and set infinite and just keep this during your opponent's end phase. The reason why I'm kind of not really doing this is because it's very greedy and just... At the end of the day, all it does is make you have one more interruption, but if you get kaiju or, like, whatever, then all of these cards are pointless. Or if you have to, like, use the Golden Land forever on, like, a Lightning Storm, because then you lose this, you have to tribute this, you have to tribute a zombie, because you don't want to use these preemptively out of nowhere, your opponent has, like, nothing to pop yet, since Lightning Storm is the first card, and then you don't have a way to recur it, so that's why I want to have, the like, the recursion card first, and, like, just not care about the final interruptions, because, honestly, three interruptions, in my book, that's already very good. It's hard to play around all of these, so... Yeah, just want to make sure that you're safe and have all the resources, so... We're gonna go for probably one final hand, it depends. Nah, probably two more. Alright, this hand is insane. <laughs> if we didn't have Plague, this would have been, like, a perfect, I like, example of why Effect Veiler could have been better than DD Crow. Sorry. But at least we, you know, uh, we don't have to worry too much about that. So we're going to be sending the Apprentice again. And obviously in this situation, you really want to send both because it's very free. Ah, my god, this is like not good. But we're going to draw like three more cards, so whatever. So a normal plague. That's like so many interruptions at the end. Jeez, oh my god. Alright, so summon Deskbot. If we get Ashed here, nothing happens. I don't understand why people complain about Needle Fiber getting Ash, it changes nothing. It's like one of the monsters that plays through disruptions the best. Like, I don't know if you guys remember the um, Steam the Cloak combo. I made a one card combo that could inherently play through two hand shops. Like, you would start by making Anaconda, you would get Veilard, and then you know, ugh, that's so bad to draw. Anyways, you would get Veilard on Anaconda, and then, like, you would be like, okay, that's fine, I'm gonna make Needle Fiber now, you get Ashed on Needle Fiber, you're like, that's still fine, you make Aura Dawn, and then you basically just combo as if nothing ever happened, and then you make double Muddy Mud Dragon, and you make Dragoon that way, so, it's, it's, I swear to god, people complaining about, about Needle Fiber very, being very fragile to hand shops are just, honestly, very bad at the game, that's just 100% inaccurate. There's a, there's a reason why that card is a problem, honestly. I don't understand why in the OCG they only limited it, but... I don't know, man. They, they did a lot of sketchy things, man. Limit, um... What's his face? Link Cross? Like, who cares, bro? Like, all it does is make Pot of Extravagance slightly less good in Altergeist. That's literally all it did. It, because the thing is, uh, Altergeist was the only deck to play both Link Cross and Extravagance, if I recall correctly. Because literally no nobody has, um... Has like the pr that privilege, so yeah. Uh, chain link one, chain link two. I'm gonna draw two. Hopefully, we draw something that doesn't suck. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, that's like worst case scenario. That's like really bad. Ah, uh, my god. All right, that's not good. I'm not happy. I mean, we can use Ravenous to pop our own cards, which is like not that bad. Because I really want to set some freaking... I, like, I already have access to the freaking Golden Land cards. I don't care. I want to set, like... I might just use this to, like, pop my own cards. Just for more interruptions. So... Ah. I can discard the useless Uni Zombie. I want to set this, like, realistically. I want to set it. So, yeah, I'm going to set these two and then... No, set only one and then discard two... Yeah, that's definitely correct. So, discard two, pop myself. Yeah, cool. And then make... Because I'm going to make VFD, so that's why I have to discard first. Make VFD. Alright. And then we set to the counter chop. Another crafty play you can do. A lot of people would have just been like, Oh, I have 65 billion elixirs. I can't interrupt my opponent. I only have VFD and two hand shops. Nah, bro, stop complaining. You, you have, like, a lot. It's just you, you gotta... You gotta be open-minded and actually try to see it. So, Black Spreader is the final card that we can use that's irrelevant. So, we have only Conquistador, so we're gonna use the Conquistador now. There's no reason to set with uh, Aquero, because since we don't have Aquero, there's a 0% chance of us using the effect during our opponent's turn. So, during the opponent's end phase, we can just use Aquero, because we don't want to clog our zones with, like, four cards already. We can just set it during the their end phase. 
and um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not trying to set like another like useless red splatter. I mean, I can, but I'm just making myself more vulnerable for no reason. But this is like actually disgusting. I'm going to explain it right now. So during your opponent's draw phase, I'm going to start by going VFD. We're going to count the amount of interruptions. So VFD is one, DD Crow and Ash are three, that's obvious. And then you have this to summon Eldritch, so that's that's still three. And then you have White Destiny. I mean, I'm just gonna do it. Might as well. Oh my god, keep chaining it to... Anyways, you guys understand. Who cares, honestly? So, yeah, I'm gonna go White Destiny, revive back the Yoko. Once again, man, just make sure you always detach Yoko and not Ravenous uh, like a moron. So, that's pop number... That's interruption number four, since you pop a monster they control without targeting. Very cool. And then you are going to have Conquistador, which is going to pop yet another card. Interruption number six. And then five. Five. I'm really bad at maths. And then you have uh, Wakanda Forever, so which is going to negate anything. So six interruptions in total. Unless I'm once again extremely stupid, but I'm pretty sure that's six interruptions. So one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> We're pretty good. And like, this is like crazy resource. Look, one, two... Three. Three cards in Grave and Plague Spreader, but like, who cares, because you don't really have an extra deck at this point, but this is just showcasing how important it is to just get the most out of your draws. Like, like it was important, man, to play that Link Cross package so we could draw one extra card, because a lot of people just go Needle Fiber, Summon Deskbot, make Aura Dawn, and then they can't use Link Cross anymore. And with no Jet Synchron, there are less plays that you can do because you can't really go like Link Rebo from Grave and then, you know, because you don't have the level 1 in the Grave yet, so you definitely have less options, but this is just like, it's just insane, and I'm pretty sure I did like a board like this almost every single time, except when I wasn't drawing the tuner, but even when I was, wasn't, I was still making like 3 interruptions, so like that's the worst case scenario and it's still very good. But yeah, uh, in conclusion, I I really like this deck. I, I definitely do think it's a problem for the game. It's definitely, it's clearly tier 1 status, no debating. Like, everybody, like, agrees on this because it's very consistent. It gets to play hand shops. It just has so many good matchups. It's very floatable. It's just, man, it's, it's just annoying. But yeah, anyways, thank you very much for watching this test hand video. If you have any comments or feedback or anything, just let me know in the comment section below. And yeah, once again, don't forget to like and subscribe because it motivates me a lot. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say. Once again, thank you very much for watching. And it is your boy Yasin signing out to peace.